Now, if we look at our code structure, we will see that we have finished all these bits, which corresponds to clicking on the Start Reset button, initiating the game, sending fruits down, taking care of the number of trials left, filling the trials left box, and also showing the game over box at the end of the game. So the only thing left is the code corresponding to slicing a fruit. But before going there, I uh, just mentioned that from this point here, our code is not inside the document ready function. So it's better that we place everything inside this function to make sure that we only run the jQuery code once our page is ready, which means that everything in the page is loaded. So jQuery can detect this state of readiness for us. And of course, this function taking care of that. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut this line and place it at the end of the document. And I'm going to push all this code to the left using shift tab. So that's it's easy to read. So now we can delete all this all these comments. So now we are going to write code for slicing a fruit. So to slice a fruit, we will need to hover on the fruit. Okay? And for this we're going to use the method mouse over. So first of all, we're going to access the fruit using its ID. And then we'll use the method mouse over. So this method is going to take as a parameter the function to execute once we hover on the element. So first, once we hover on the fruit, we are going to increase the score by one, which means that we're going to increase the variable score by one, and then we'll update the HTML element. So first, we'll increase the variable value by one, and then we're going to access the element of ID score value, which is this span, and we'll change the HTML using the HTML method, and change that to the updated value of the variable score. So we are updating the score here. All right, so if we save this and try it, so now we can see that our score goes up by one once we hover on the fruit. All right, next we will need to play audio once we slice a fruit. So to do this, we are going to need some audio files. So first let's create a folder inside our project folder and call it audio. So inside this folder, we're going to place some audio files. There is a good website we can use to download sound effects for free. It's called freesound.org. So if you go there and look for Kung Fu Knife Sword, and then click on Creative Commons Zero for licenses. So this will show up only the files we can download for free without having to give any attribution. So I'm going to go for the first file. So if you can just download that on your computer, okay? So once you've done that, then you will get a WAV file. But this is not the best to use because most brow browsers, they are compatible with MP3 and OGG. So what we're going to do, we are going to convert this file to two files, one MP3 file and one OGG file. So to do that, we're going to use another website, 
it's called audio.online minus sign converse.com so you will see a couple of links there one link to convert to mp3 and one link to convert to OGG so you can just go to these links and follow the steps it's pretty easy and straightforward and once you converted the file to two files you can place them on your desktop and change their names to slice fruits. So the first one is going to be an mp3 file and the second one is going to be an OGG file. And then you can drag them into your audio folder. And now we are ready to use these files. Next, we're going to go to our index.html file and create a new HTML element at the end of the body. So this is going to be an audio element. So we're going to use the audio tags. All right. And then inside this element, we're going to have a couple of elements. So each one of them is a source element. Where we are going to place the source attribute. So for the first one, we're going to go to audio and then slicefruit.mp3. And for the second one, we're going to go to audio slicefruit.ogg. So most browsers, they will work with either mp3 or ogg. So first we will try mp3. If it doesn't work, our fallback is going to be the OGG file. Okay. Now, let's go back to our jQuery file. Or before doing that, let's give an ID to our audio element so that we can refer to it in the jQuery code. And I'm going to call it slice sound. So let's save. Control S and let's go to the jQuery file now. All right. So to play the audio, we're going to need to access the audio element using its ID. So there are two ways of doing this. We can either use the document get elements by ID and we use the ID slice sound. And then the method to use here is play. So this will play the audio for us. If we want to use the jQuery selector, like this. This is going to return an array and not really the HTML element, not the audio element. So the first element of the array is going to be the audio element. So if you use the jQuery selector, you would need to use the index zero as you're accessing the first elements of the array. Okay. So let's comment one of these and keep only one. Let's save. So now if we start the game, we can see that we can hear sound. And the score also goes up by one every time we slice the fruit. We still don't see the animation of slicing the fruit because we haven't done that yet but sound is working and the score is working. Let's add a little comment there saying play sound. Okay. Now the only thing left is to explode the fruits. So if you go to our final game, once we slice a fruit, there are a few things happening. The fruit will stop going down. That's number one. And then it's going to explode, which means that we hide it through animation. And then we send a new fruit. Okay. So let's do this the easy way first without any animation. So we're going to make the fruit stop going down. Stop root. Okay, so to do this, 
we are going to use the function stop action. Well, if we go to this function, we'll see that we're doing two things. We are stopping the fruits from going down, and also we are hiding the fruits. Okay, so it's doing two things for us. Okay. So that's stopping the fruit and hiding it. And then we're going to send a new fruit. And to do that, we're going to use the function start action. So let's save and try this. Okay, so we can see that once we slice a fruit, it disappears and we send a new fruit. And our score goes up by one. But this is not exactly what we want. We want to play animation. Okay. And then send a new fruit. So to do this, we are going to stop the fruit using the first bit of our stop action function, which is to stop the set interval action. That's going to stop the fruit. Okay. And then we are going to hide the fruit through animation. And to do that, we're going to access the fruit using its ID. And then we're going to use the method hide, but this time our method is going to take a couple of parameters. So the first parameter corresponds to the animation, so we're exploding the fruit, so it's going to be explode. And the second parameter is going to be the duration of our animation, and we're going to go for 500 milliseconds. Okay, so this is slicing the fruits. Okay. And then we're going to send a new fruit. So if we do this straight away, it's going to be executed at the same time that we start the animation. Okay? And we don't want that. We want to wait until the animation is finished, so after 500 milliseconds, and then we can send a new fruit. So if you remember, we are going to use a function set timeout, which will take a couple of parameters. So the first parameter is going to be the function to execute. In our case, we want to execute the function start action. And the second parameter is the amount of time we're going to wait before executing this function. So what's going to happen here? We will play animation which will take 500 milliseconds and we will wait during those 500 milliseconds and then once the animation is done after 500 then we're going to play or execute this function so just before we continue you would have noticed that this is the first time we use the function hide using two parameters like this so if we use jQuery only, it's not going to work. And the reason why is because this way of using the function hide comes with the package of the jQuery UI, which we haven't embedded in our code at the moment. So if we use the function like this without embedding jQuery UI, it's not going to work and we'll get an error. So we will need to embed jQuery UI so let's go to the Google CDN and get the links from there. So if you click on jQuery UI, you'll see a couple of links there, one for the CSS and one for the JavaScript. We only need the JavaScript components. If you want to use the CSS components, you can just place it in the head elements. 
okay so I'm gonna copy that right after the jQuery components because the jQuery UI is using functions from jQuery okay and if you want you can also copy the CSS components in the head element although we don't need that really okay so you would need that if you want to use any other functionalities in the CSS components okay now let's save this and let's go back to our jQuery file save it as well and now let's try our game so everything now is supposed to work so animation is working okay you can see that our score is working as well the trials left are supposed to work let's see yes it does so we are getting fruits at different speeds and also our game over is supposed to work start button is working the reset game is working as well and our game is now complete so what you can do now you can upload all the files to your server and share the game with your friends family and the whole world congratulations you have just created a nice website using HTML CSS jQuery and jQuery UI you built a website with nice decoration using HTML and CSS. Also, you managed to play sound using HTML and jQuery. You managed to show and hide elements with timing events. Also, you played nice animations using jQuery and jQuery UI. So if you change the design or the logic of the game, or if you built something completely different, then please share with me and other students. I look forward to seeing you finishing other projects and becoming a highly skilled and professional web developer.